Thank you to the panelists, Anilone Baga, Carsten Hoy, and Werner Hamken. Now you have the opportunity to ask some questions, and um, to one of please address to which per, uh, who you want to address the question to. So just raise your hand if you have a question to one of the panelists. Uh, Luke Coffey with the Heritage Foundation. This question's for Mr. Hamakin. Um, I was wondering if you could give us an update on when the shipping route to North America, specifically to Maine, is going to become operational. I was under the impression that it was going to be, what well, we were told, the end of this year, and we are very much approaching the end of this year. So I was wondering if there's any update. Thank you. I'll just provide a, f uh, a short update on this. Yes, originally we, s we did schedule the, the beginning of the new services from Greenland to and from Greenland late this year. Unfortunately, we have had some delays on the ship construction that is associated with this project, and now we foresee uh, a startup of the service late first quarter, or early second quarter 2020. There is a man over here. My name is uh, Kai Jul Petersen. A question from Mr. Hoy. Uh, thank you for this uh, about the gold, a gold mine, because my, my daughter is a geologist, specialty in her thesis, gold in Greenland. My question is, is there a prospect of developing a high-tech uh, software business in Greenland? Do you see any, any developments that can, can sustain such a development? Thank you. If we are talking high-tech, firms in Greenland. We have seen some which are in a developing phase, but we have one which have to do to the, uh, the technological nature of the product move to Denmark at the moment. So yes, we are seeing um, high-tech companies, but it's not what we are used to, to see uh, on a daily basis. Over here. Henry Tillman from London. To follow up on that, what, what about starting at the school level? Estonia started coding for five-year-olds. And over a period of time, Estonia's done a fantastic job of growing it. So yeah, I understand that at the high level, it's difficult to build tech hubs. We follow 75 tech hubs around the world. But it started at age five in small number of schools as a start. Yes, at the moment, we are developing an not, the, not only the financial ecosystem, but also the ecosystem on how the development is for the startup, all the way from the uh, preschool, all the way to when the, uh, they are in business. And uh, we are looking much into um, accelerates uh, development and also in the incubation uh, way of doing things and help the startups to, uh, to go in the right direction. Any, any other who has a question? There's someone back there. Yes, please. Paige Wilson, University of Iceland. My question was for Mrs. Bagger. Uh, in your presentation, uh, and as well in the presentation of uh, the Premier, there was more talk of um, you know, Greenland moving towards greater autonomy, greater independence, etc. And my question was really, what does that mean for Greenlanders? How do you know when you've reached that outcome? And is there an intergenerational gap on this issue? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you for the question. The government of Greenland is working towards independency, but at the end of the day, the people in Greenland, when they decided to be independent, they'll have an election, and it's up to them to decide whether we should be independent. But our goal as a government is to create better conditions, better living conditions, and developing our economy, our society towards that uh, independency. Anyone else who has a question? Yes, in the back. Maybe it's not only a question, but a comment. Um, we work in Greenland on innovation and entrepreneurship, and the department of Anilona supports the uh, 
entrepreneurship, uh, foundation of entrepreneurship, who works with young people, where I was the regional leader for a couple of months ago. Now I'm the head of communication in Tele Greenland, where we actually are working on a project with coding classes and also uh, supports young people with uh, different activities in the schools. And now, last week, it became possible to uh, have connections through the internet, through Skype, directly to the classrooms for the first time in Greenlandic history. So, uh, Mrs. Anne-Lone Bakker, she Skyped from Nuuk and to a small village in Greenland together with the children. Thank you, Julia Rademacher. And we just have a time for one more question from the audience. Yes, there's one over there. Thank you. Uh, Greenland is an interesting example of a country that has left the EU. In the current world of increasing polarization and trade, is your status now an advantage for being open for business, or is it increasingly a disadvantage? How are you dealing with, uh, with trade issues with the rest of the world? I can try to answer it, but uh, our investment is in Greenland, and we don't actually trade. The people come from outside and from all over the world. So, well, I think, well, you can please. It's a, it's a very good question, because uh, we, in, in the development of Greenland trade, uh, the infrastructure is becoming more and more ready. Uh, in three years' time, we will have airports in play that was never seen before. You will have shipping routes that are available to provide the physical service. But on top of that, there will always be a regulatory layer of some kind. And the status of Greenland being somewhere in between the EU and non-EU by being part of the, of the uh, let's say, the Danish uh, realm, if you like, uh, then there are challenges with defining exactly how trade agreements should be formed between Green Greenland and other countries. But, but we are certain that with, with the increased focus on doing business with Greenland, then where there is a will, there will also be a way. And, and infrastructure uh, is one of the major blocking factors. And what we see, then the, the rest, the software part of it, will then, uh, in, in, in our view at least, be able to combat whatever regulatory blocking there will be for free trade development. So we do not see it as a major concern. It will be like water finding its uh, way through the easiest way down, downhill. Mm. Yes, unfortunately, our time is up. I want to thank, uh, thank the panelists, Anilune Bagger, Carsten Hoy, and Van Hamken, and you and the audience for asking these very good questions. We just remind about that uh, Greenland has also huge challenges, but it has opportunities that we know. So opening up for foreign uh, investors and corporations on common grounds with respect for the people of Greenland the Arctic is open for business. Thank you for the attention, everybody, and have a nice evening.